I would like to invite our next speaker, Anand uh, Bora, to the stage. I would like to request Dr. Indra Bhi Rekhan to kindly facilitate the search. He is an illustrious and distinguished advocate of Guwahati High Court. Anand Bora has the experience of practicing law since 1997. Owing to his expertise and excellence in the domain of legal services, he has been designated as senior advocate by the Bhagwati High Court in the year 2017. It is indeed much of an achievement and a matter of pride that he has been the youngest designated senior advocate. In the year 2017 itself, he was also officially recommended as the judge of High Court, which he declined. He has represented several high profile cases and is well acclaimed in the field for his commendable service, especially in criminal justice only. I welcome you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be a part of this seminar, the national seminar. It's always a pleasure for me to be a part of these students also. I have seen some probably you are these students. Though I am not a teacher, neither I am here to teach you anything. I am here just to share my 25 years experience in the field of law. I have started my career in 1997. Now I have completed more than 25 years. And a little bit of experience provided probably I have also gathered during this time. So I am just here, I am just here to just to share my experience in the field of law, particularly the subject which I have been given today to address before you. The, my subject is definitely, and before I start, the, the everybody is talking, just I have heard that the, the inequality before the, the, the law in case of the woman and the child, but the one thing I must First of all, I must share with you today morning when I have opened up the paper, newspaper, the first news what I have seen today was that that the, the BCCI, that the Board of Ticket Council of India has decided to, to give the same remuneration to the women team. The same remuneration, though it is not connected to any legal thing but the whatever so the necessity that the topic I have been given the necessity for the to see the what are the necessity in the in case or in the field of the woman the probably the board of cricket has they have felt that there is a necessity to enhance the, the remuneration and equal payment to the main now and you probably know also now the, the BCCI also change the term batsman. They are no longer calling it batsman. They are calling it as a better. Because it's also if you call better, it gives the both the gender. It represents both the gender. So BCC and nowadays they don't call it a batsman. It's now they call it a better. So that's how I feel that definitely the one day it will come that the everybody will be equal before the law. Though we call it we are everybody is equal, but the, it's not that. That's not that the issue. For the first time, I, I would say, the, what are the inequalities? The first of all, it is always, what is my feeling, it is my personal feeling, that it is always difficult for the women or the, the students, basically the female students who are pursuing the law, the difficulty not in the subject matter, not in the brilliance, difficulty is the practical problems. Because as a law student, I am also a law student, what are the problems? As a male, I have some advantages in this particular field. What are the advantages I am having? That I can travel in the midnight. If I, my senior say, ask me, go and collect this paper, go and collect this book from another chamber or you have, if the, my senior retains me till to be 12 o'clock, I can be there to assist him. But, but for a girl, it is always a difficult. We are talking about gender equality, but it is talk, practically it is always a difficult for her hard to remain in the chamber till 12 o'clock in the midnight. 
It's true. There are other things also. If she is married, she has to look after the families. She has to send her daughter or the child, the child in the morning to the, to the school. Then they, she has to attend the chamber. The senior is waiting. In the night also, after the court hours, she can't rest. She has to attend the chamber. In the initial years, till she is not independent. So it takes about seven to eight years to be an independent lawyer to start his own practice. I was 12 years under a senior. Then I started my own practice. It took me 12 years to start my, to stand up on my own feet. This is, this is the reality. And we can't ignore it also. So that's how the inequality in the justice system it starts in the beginning itself. But we have to see, we have to, there are, these are the reasons. Now, let us not waste time that the, my topic was the impact and the need analysis of the judicial system in the context of protecting women and the child. Look, in India or Indian, we have lots of statutory enactment to protect the women and the children. No doubt about it. There are lots of statutes has been given, but whether we are following it in true sense, whether the judicial system is following it is in the true sense. For instance, as a woman, can you go to a police station in the midnight? But you have an apprehension. I have seen the ladies have an apprehension to go in the midnight in a police station, but men don't have that apprehension. But why? Why a woman needs to, if he wants to file a case, suppose something had happened in the midnight. She was assaulted by somebody, maybe her husband also. She wants to file a case immediately in the midnight to protect herself. But she will wait till this morning. She will discuss with the other members. She will take a shelter. She will take another male company. Why she will not go to the immediately to the... Because she needs the protection immediately. Then why a woman needs to go to a police station to lodge and complain in the meantime? Can't they file it from the home? Is there any possibility? Is there now that the communication has reached to another stage? We, why do I need to go to a police station to lodge a complaint? Whether I can directly file it from my home? Can I email it? Can I WhatsApp it? These are the provisions can be tomorrow. These are the provisions has to be incorporated in the CRPC so that these inequalities we can always bypass. That is just an example. If you go to a police station in the midnight, they will refuse to give you the copy of the FIR you have filed. You are entitled otherwise. If you are male, you can insist. But if you are a female, the police person will say, no, no, come, tomorrow, come, tomorrow morning. We don't have the, the papers, we don't have the photo state. You take your complaint, come tomorrow morning. Come with two copies. In the DV Act also, Domestic Violence Act, protection for the woman under the Domestic Violence Act, the every woman is entitled for the free copy. I have never seen in my 25 years experience that the free copies are supplied immediately to the litigants, to the woman. But in the Act, there is a provision itself. Neither the lawyer knows it, neither the doctor definitely not. The victim will always, she, she definitely doesn't have that knowledge that she is entitled for the free copies. Nobody, even I think, the, the, you are also not aware of the fact that the, if you are an aggrieved, if you are an informant in a case, you are entitled for a free copy of the FIR, sealed and signed by the, the officer in charge. Nobody knows, but it is there. So what I am saying, that the, yes, the law is there, but the, whether the spirit is there or not, whether we are following the law in particular way, the, where he has to follow it. And long before in 1937, the Privy Council has said, if the law is there, you have to follow it straight away. There is no deviation. 
there can't be any deviation. If law is provided, this right to you, it has to be. There cannot be any deviation. So by there are lots of lacunas in the laws also. For example, the what is the the use and misuse? Both you have to balance the use of law and the misuse of law also sometimes creates problem for the litigant. I am giving you an example. You know the, the one step at a time. The, there is a provision called 498A, cruelty against women by the husband or her family. It is called the 498A section of the IPC. But it was so misused by the certain people. Now what happened? It has been diluted by the Supreme Court. The state has lost it. Why? Because of the misuse. But the, because of the misuse of some women, the other women who are really victim of these, they are suffering. So I am always saying that you have to balance both, that the use and the misuse. Similarly, that's why the now it was originally, still today, the 498A is non available applicable provision. If you register a case against the husband or the family members, if you register a case, it's a non available offence. Police can arrest you without the warrant. That is called non available. Without the warrant, the police can arrest you. Only the court can grant you bail. Police can't grant you the bail also in the police station. Now what happens? Because there are so many false cases as initiated by so many people and basically in the interior places it's happening. So what happening? The, now the Supreme Court has passed an a judgment and the judgment says now before arrest you have to give a notice to the your husband or what? That the moment he got the notice he has an option for the anticipatory bail. Whatever may be the seri seri seriousness of the crime, is entitled. But initially it was not there. Now, now because of the misuse of the provisions, the Supreme Court has to put its judgment on it to make it balance. But if, when it makes its balance, sometimes it also creates problem for the some some the genuine litigants are suffering. Similarly, what happens again, when it's become non bailable what happened? The police picked up the husband immediately. If you lodge a complaint, maybe very small issues are involved, but you lodge a complaint. But you have lodged a complaint and the police picked up the husband and he was put inside the jail. The once the male, the male goes to inside, then the male ego comes. It generates the male ego that you have put me under the custody, now I am not going to settle. So this is the dichotomy. If you make it a non bailable, that is also it creates problem. If you make it a non bailable, that also creates problem. So you have to balance both ways. So if the, the, the mother-in-law goes, goes to the jail because of the daughter-in-law's complaint, do you think that the, the Son has the, the audacity to, <laughs> to, to, to settle the issues subsequently. The mother will definitely poke her nose. No, no, you can't. She has put me in the bar, behind the bar. I am not going to settle it. No, no, no. That's enough. To settle with the another girl, not this girl again. These are happening, these are reality, what I have seen. I was a member of the Women's Commission for five years. I have seen lots of problems initially. Do I have? Though now, similarly, the delay of the, I'll just, because of the paucity of time, I'm not going into the details. Because the, the delay in the trial and whatsoever, 
there are there are there are the laws are there 155 proceeding where the woman can ask for money for her maintenance during the if the woman is deprived or he has been thrown out of the husband's residence or maintenance is not given the maintenance then she can approach the court under 125 proceeding law is there protection is there but what happens in reality i'll tell you the husband will definitely he will initially he will go to the court then in sometimes he will absent then again the proceeding will restart again the summoning will start the lawyer the cunning lawyer will take the date again then and again and again and again so what happens that the lady is deprived of his legal rights because of the the judicial procedure why not on the first day there is a provision for the the, the giving the maintenance in the first day itself but we hardly see then the next case is next problem is that it's it's a very prolonged and the, if the husband refuses to pay what happens if he decides no i'll not pay rather i'll go to a civil imprisonment there is no criminal imprisonment in case of the 125 proceeding it is a civil imprisonment so he will decide okay i'll go to the civil imprisonment there because the civil imprisonment doesn't have any other consequences he is not going to lose his job and other thing because it's a civil imprisonment so he decided to go into the jail so who will take care of it that the woman who is suffering then next thing is that that the, the, the woman has to prove that the, what is the income of the husband first of all why not it is otherwise why not it otherwise the moment the woman files a case it is the abundant the, the law can be abundant duty for the husband to provide the, his income immediately to the court without any further dates the moment he files a case 125 there is no need for appearance of the we need no need to fix a date for the appearance of the party the notice will go directly to the husband notice will go directly to the wife the, there will be notice that the husband will be directed by the court that you provide the your income either the id or if you are doing a job in the official the, the government job then you provide the salary certificate that can be done the, the moment the salary certificate comes to the court through email or whatsoever the court can decide immediately by going through his income immediately that his income is 10,000 rupees and his, his woman is suffering so let us give him a, give her a 4,000 rupees immediately otherwise what happens she files the case 125 next day it will come for the appearance of the husband next day it will file both the parties will file then the woman is filed to uh, has to bring that the what is his income she doesn't know what is his actual income whether he has filed in the income tax or not if he is a businessman then he has to go she has to find out whether he files an income tax she has to collect it or she has to go to the, the, the his respected respective the office collect his salary certificate then has to place it in the record then the court will decide the, yes his salary is so much so we can deduct this much to her so it creates the it delays the whole proceeding but we can fast study it's not today is technology is so fast we can do it within a fraction of second we can write a letter to his this day if he is working in an official capacity we can write the court can issue that he give us his salary statement that how much he is taking why not so these are the things needs to be as I said the analysis has to be there the judicial analysis where we can change the whole scenario immediately so that nobody suffers nobody suffers the law is always has to balance so that nobody suffers then the similarly in the domestic violence act also you need to go to a protection officer or you need to go to uh, take a lawyer then you have to collect the all the information then the protection officer will file the case on your behalf then 
if the court is, is generous, then the court may expertly give you some amount. If the court feels no, let us hear the husband, then the, again the notice will go to the husband, then he will appear, he will find a he is common, that is called WS. So this proceeding will go on and go on and go on. And this similarly, if you again hear that the court can pass a protection order, that the, there are different kinds of protection order under the Act can be passed. It can be a monetary protection, it can be a shelter protection. There are different kinds of protection order has been provided in the Act itself. I am talking about the monetary protection only here. Even the shelter, if the husband refused to give the shelter, because the court may issue a direction to the husband, you provide the shelter till you decide the case. That's an interim order. But the husband refuses. He will give you a shelter. Though he will give you a shelter, he will say that yes, I am giving the shelter. She can stay in my garage. Is it a shelter? It's not a shelter. So shelter, you have to define what is the shelter, what is she entitled for, how she, her upbringing, how she stayed with you. These are the shelters. The husband can play trick, the family members can play trick. Then the next stage is that, that if he refuses, if he refuses, then the court has to again, has to make an inquiry, the whether there is an actual refusal or not whether the court direction was followed or not. There has to be an inquiry. Court directly cannot say that he has refused it. Court has to give him a chance also because it is a, his natural right. So, you will definitely come up with some, some defense that these are the, the problem I have faced. So, I couldn't do it. So, again, if he defies also then you have to go to the police station, lodge a complaint again, that he is defining the court order, then the police again in the inquiry, whether he is actually defining the court order. So it will prolong the whole thing. So that's why we need a need-based judicial scrutiny, all these issues related to child and the woman. And it's regarding the child protection, we have the shelter houses. And what is actually happening inside the shelter houses, do you know? Have you ever visited the central houses in your lifetime? In some central houses, it is horrible. It is horrible. Some people are taking advantage of the central houses. So how to protect those children in the central houses? I will not name, I will not name in one central house, a very famous person is looking after that central house, but he is misusing every bit of it. He is, he is sexually harassing the inmates, though he was a very renowned person. I don't want to name him. But this is what is happening. The, finally, somebody, some one lady has come out with an allegation, with a courage, that this is what is happening in the central house. Then there is an enquiry by the state commission state, legal services authority, then there is an FIR, then thereafter he has been booked. But in the most of the central houses, the condition of the children are not so protected, though we have a law. But who is looking after the central houses? Is there specific laws to look after the central houses, how it should, the children act is there, the child act is there. But the, having an act, and doing it and following it is true spirit is a different. But the problem in India is that following it in true spirit. That is always the difficulty in all these kind of enactments. These are beneficiary enactment. It is only for the benefit of the people of the country. But even in the beneficiary legislation, we don't get the actual benefit because we don't have that spirit. The people are not having that spirit. That's the problem. Even in the police station or in the court, 
is there any the child friendly or woman friendly place to sit on have you ever seen in the court that it is some corner has been maintained for the woman and the child rarely it comes rarely you will see the child and the woman has to stand there even she is a complainant she will be standing there for the whole day with a small baby on her on her lap she has to stand there is no water there is no feeding place only providing the law will not do but this friendly atmosphere is need based that friendly atmosphere everywhere in the my contention is it should be in the court also in the police station also the friendly atmosphere for the litigant who is suffering has to be there if a woman goes he suffers if the doctor is not there she'll take him to a place in the midnight to a hospital is far away if she is alone will take her to police constable is she safe then in the hospital in the midnight there may not be any doctor available in the far away places i am not talking about the guwahati situation not talking about the town or a township i am talking about the rural areas where these are the happenings the doctors are not available she has to immediately she has to be examined by the doctor but doctor is not available the my one of my friend the few is bad did this can happen in india can you believe that a victim of rape he filed an fir in half the father filed an fir the first requirement is that the medical examination then the in the medical examination the doctor will determine her age because the in case of the rape is the age is the one vital factor the most vital factor is the age of the victim girl whether she is above 18 or she is below 18 now how to determine that age if she doesn't have the certificate she may not be educated lady she may not have that certificate at the time school certificate then how to determine that age then there has to be an ossification test the whole do do the ossification test is the doctor so if she will take into the hospital in the hospital the x ray is now necessary to do the ossification test because the the doctor has to take the x ray of the hands this bone bone can determine her actual age bone and the teeth so ossification test is related to her bones so x ray is necessary but there is no fund in the hospital for the x ray so the j dabi the superintendent of the hospital he has to write it to the government that i need so much fund because there is a victim waiting for the ossification test and the other other related test so in the meantime the sanction comes already 48 hours 24 hours gone if the 48 hours 24 hours gone after the medical is done after the 48 hours as per the law that the the medical examination whatever the report you can't take it as a absolute <coughs> uncontroverted document because in case of a rape it has to be done within 24 hours the medical examination <coughs> because of the paucity of the fund the father has to pay so that the medical examination can be done within 24 hours we don't have fund but we have the law we have the law but we don't have the fund <clears throat> but the, these are the things 
the legislature has to see, the court has to see. <coughs> the second, there are other problems also. Now, <coughs> the husband is having the relationship with the other woman. How the, the woman can prove it? It's very difficult to prove it. The adultery is the most difficult. Nowadays, no doubt, the adultery no longer exists as a criminal offence. But for the other purpose, for the purpose of the civil law, for divorce, adultery is one of the factors. Adultery is not a criminal offence. That's a different issue. But the adultery is otherwise relevant for the purpose of divorce. But it is always difficult to prove adultery. Why adultery has been now this no longer exists because of the, the judgment of the Supreme Court, the Justice Chandrachur, who is now very much available just few hours from here in the Kajiranga today. Because of him, now the adultery has been is no longer is the criminal offence. But the, why? Because the segregated because of the, the old laws, there is a discrimination. You can charge a male for adultery, but you cannot charge a woman for the adultery. That was the one reason for quashing the whole section. Because it is, gives an inequality between two genders. If the male can be charged for adultery, definitely women also can be charged for the adultery. But in the our law, it was created by the British. We have not, <coughs> we have not changed after the British has gone. We have continued with the, with the IPC. There are minimum changes in the IPC apart from the in <coughs> IT offences. There is no further. But the, in that case, the the women are not. They cannot be charged for adultery. That's how the Chandra should say this is an inequality exists in the. The law itself, that can't be. Now the problem is that the moment the adultery goes, now it is very difficult to prove a case against the husband or to get the divorce. These are the factors of the judicial. <coughs> then now the, the one more act has come up for the protection of the child. Probably my time is over. <laughs> I can understand. <coughs> the two minutes left. Within two minutes, Hati Mari Burukat Burwabai, there is a saying in the SMAs, I can't do it. So let us conclude it. There is a new act called POSCO. That's also, that's a very deconium. Somebody says it's very tough laws. And what is happening today is that, the fact is that, like 498A, POSCO is now also misused by some people. Now what will happen tomorrow? I can give you in writing. After few years you will find it that the Supreme Court again will dilute the process. Because the people are misusing the laws. Whenever there is a misuse of the law, because I have seen in my experience there is a dispute between two Neighbors regarding the the land, land dispute is there. But but there is a small child. The father has taken the advantage of her girl. He has filed an FIR that the my child has been abused by my neighbor. There is no actually there is no abuse. It's a false case altogether because there is a protection given to the child, protection given to the informant in this kind of offences. If you file the false case also, there is no problem. Where is the inherent protection given in the act itself? So, in the village areas, some communities are, in, are using it as a tools for revenge. To settle their own dispute, land dispute. It's going on, it's rampant now. And forget about it, we have a notion that the woman doesn't Regarding his chastity, women doesn't come up in the court. They don't tell, they are absolutely trustworthy. That was the law. Now that notion is changing. 
the no longer that no, notion exists that the woman is absolutely truthful regarding her chastity. That idea, that notion, slowly degrading that. So tomorrow there may be a law. Then what will be then? Then the some the genuine cases, the genuine victim will suffer. So hopefully I have not exceeded two minutes. Thank you once again for bearing me for this.